Hi, Jim Hebel with Bedecker Plastics. Today I want to discuss the coefficient of linear thermal expansion, or the CLTE. The coefficient of linear thermal expansion defines how the size of an object changes with a change in temperature. We all know that objects tend to expand with heat, then contract again as the heat is removed or the object cools. Examples of this are seen in everyday life. Expansion joints and bridges requ are required to allow the structure and its components to expand and contract with changes in temperature. A mercury thermometer is another example of a liquid that expands and contracts with temperature change. Understanding the CLTE of a plastic, or really of any material, is often very important for a designer or a material user. And because plastics tend to expand and contract more than traditional metals, understanding and designing for this movement is critical, particularly when designing plastic components compared to metal components. Let's cover how the CLTE is measured. There are multiple ways that a material manufacturer determines the CLTE for their products. One of the common methods is through the use of TMA or thermal mechanical analysis. Specifically, the ASTM test standard for measuring the CLTE of a solid via TMA is ASTM E831. The way this test works is a small test sample, like this, is heated on a quartz platform. These test samples can be either square or circular in nature. The length must be between 2 and 10 millimeters, and the samples must have flat, parallel ends. The test equipment will have a small rod with a slight positive pressure placed against the sample. As the temperature of the environmental chamber is changed, the change in the sample dimension is measured. Typically, the test involves cooling the sample to low temperatures and then running the sample up to some higher temperatures, resulting in a curve showing the CLTE versus temperature. Here is an example of the CLTE curves for four different materials, three different polymers and one metal, aluminum. The CLTE is documented on the vertical axis while temperature is documented on the horizontal axis. You will see that as the temperature increases, all the materials show an increase in the coefficient of thermal expansion. In other words, as the CLTE of the material increases, the material will exhibit more movement and thus be less stable. The aluminum is of course very stable across this temperature range and shows a very consistent CLTE. The virgin peak material has a higher CLTE yet remains quite stable up to about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point it starts to soften under load. As it softens the CLTE really starts to climb. This is typical of most polymers. Once a material approaches its glass transition temperature, it becomes susceptible to increased movement due to temperature change. The green graph shows the CLTE for a 30% carbon fiber filled peak. This graph follows a similar path to the virgin peak, yet the carbon fibers provide improved stability and an overall lower CLTE. Finally, the blue graph denotes the CLTE for a 30% glass fiber filled polyamide amide a material also known as Torlon 5530 PAI. The base polymer PAI is known to be more stable and have a lower CLTE compared to the base polymer peak. This higher temperature material is also more stable at higher temperatures compared to peak. And you can see that the stability via the lower CLTE is also magnified with the glass fibers, particularly in the higher temperature range. Of course, the addition of the glass fibers help to lower the material CLTE and improve its overall stability. What you can learn from this graphic is that most polymers will move with temperature, and that movement is often greater compared to that of most common metals. In order to properly design your plastic components, one has to have an understanding of that movement. The good news is that this material movement is often quite predictable with the right set of data. Of course, there are newer composite polymers with incredible stability. For example, here is a 60% woven carbon fiber composite held together with a peak binder. The woven matrix of carbon fiber is in the X and Y plane. 
for this material and it provides great stability at temperature. Now, let's see this material CLTE on our curve compared to the same materials. This curve highlights the composite's very low CLTE in the XY plane, where the fibers are woven together, thus providing incredible stability. Composites such as this continue to be developed, offering designers lightweight material solutions that rival the strength and stability of many metals. Most designers and engineers simply reference a materials data sheet to get their CLTE information. Just understand that the most material data sheets simply take an average CLTE and publish that value. So rather than having the entire CLTE curve at your fingertips, you usually will just see a single data point. The single data point can be helpful, but may not paint the entire picture of how the material will expand and contract with temperature change. Published values are often averages taken between minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit and 300 degrees Fahrenheit. The CLTE units are a distance per distance per degree of temperature change. For example, inch per inch per degree F or millimeter per millimeter per degree Celsius. This chart shows the data sheet CLTE values for a few common polymers compared to a few common metals. Ultra high molecular weight polyethylene has a very high CLTE and is known to move a lot with temperature change. Materials like nylon and acetyl are a bit more stable. As shown previously, glass and carbon filled versions of more advanced polymers like PEAK and PAI start to rival the stability of some of your metals. At temperatures below 300 degrees, of course. For many materials and many applications, these average CLTE values can be useful for practical material movement calculations. Let's review how to use the CLTE datasheet value for a simple calculation to estimate material movement with temperature. Here is an example of an Ultem 1000 PEI component. Let's assume there is a dimension of 1 inches in length that we want to understand the change in that length with a change in temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So in other words, the dimension measures 1 inches at a room temperature of 73 degrees F. The question is, what will it measure if the environment for this component changes to 173 degrees Fahrenheit, or a rise in temperature of 100 degrees? The formula to calculate the change in length is the ratio of the change in length, or delta L, over the original length L is equal to the CLTE times the change in temperature or delta T. So all you need to do is multiply the original length of 1 inches times the material CLTE times the change in temperature of 100 degrees and you get a length of 0 0.003 inches or three thousandths of an inch. This is a fairly accurate approximation. You can use this same formula for a quick check of really any dimension on the part. Perhaps you want to understand how this cap will fit onto this two-part component with a change in temperature. Other uses may be to understand the movement of dissimilar materials in a design. Here is an injection molded component combining Ultem PEI resin molded over brass inserts. Understanding the CLTE of both of these materials can help the designer properly predict how these materials will react together with a change in temperature. Another use of CLTE may be to understand the amount of clearance to design into the ID of a polymer bearing to avoid contact with a rotating shaft and preventing the seizing of the shaft in the bearing. As a designer, just remember that most plastics tend to soften as temperatures increase. The CLTE will increase with temperature also, thus equating to more material movement. Look for your plastic supplier to be able to provide you CLTE data beyond just the average data sheet values. Having CLTE curves with data documented across a wide temperature range will improve your ability to accurately predict the movement and allow you to design accordingly. If you have any questions on the coefficient of linear thermal expansion, please comment or feel free to reach out. I hope you found this short video helpful and thanks for watching. Contact us with your plastic or composite sheet, 
rod, tube, or custom profile requirements. Give us a call. Quotes are free. We look forward to hearing from you.